welcome back friends to another lecture on the teacher on demand series this lecture is on immune hematology and i'll be discussing about the blood group systems of the body in particular the abo and the rh i thank you for your suggestions and requests for lectures before i proceed on with this lecture i want to make a disclaimer that all the pictures that have been used in this presentation have been downloaded from the google images and i'm thankful to the persons who've uploaded them onto the net now this is a picture of how a cell would look like under the scanning electron microscope if you look at the surface you find many of these small nodular structures what are these structures these structures are various compounds which are expressed on the cell surface membrane they could be proteins they could be carbohydrates or they could be complex lipids now a lot of proteins or other substances are expressed on the surface of the rbc membrane also because that also is a cell these proteins can be used for grouping the rbcs into similar groups like if somebody expresses the kel protein then he is called a kel positive if somebody is expressing duffy you can use a system to call it a duffy positive or duffy negative similarly you have the abo blood group and the rh blood group those who express the abo will be classified accordingly and those who express or do not express the rh group will be classified accordingly <coughs> of all the of, of all the different proteins or carbohydrates expressed on the surface of the rbc the abo and the rh group are very important because <coughs> they have their role in blood transfusion now let's discuss the abo blood group system the abo blood group system is basically made up carbohydrates that is the abo blood group system consists of carbohydrate antigens they derive from a parent carbohydrate which is the h antigen this h antigen is then acted upon by different sets of enzyme to produce different products now one enzyme can act upon the h antigen to produce a new protein new carbohydrate and that carbohydrate would be the a antigen there is an other enzyme which can act on the same h antigen and produce an other carbohydrate which would be the b antigen some people may have both the enzymes so they would be expressing the a antigen as well as the b antigen and there would be some people who may not have either of the enzymes and just express the h antigen now what are these enzymes the enzymes one enzyme is n acetyl galactose transferase this is the basic carbohydrate antigen of the h antigen consists of glucose galactose and acetyl glucose amine galactose and fucose a combination of this is the h antigen to this if the enzyme n acetyl galactose transferase acts it attaches a molecule n acetyl galactose and this h antigen is then converted to the a antigen if the enzyme is just a plain galactose transferase which results in attaching of a carbohydrate galactose then we have the production of the b antigen so once again getting back to this picture the parent h antigen if it is acted by the enzyme n galactose transferase you get the a antigen if it is acted by galactose transferase then you get the b antigen if the person has both the enzymes then he is the ab blood group type and in case none of these enzymes are present then the h antigen is not acted upon remains as such and these people form the o blood group now i use the word antigens when i was talking about the classification system of rbcs why antigen now antigen is any substance which is capable of producing an antibody in the recipient now if a person has a antigen he can, and is and, and that blood that rbc is given to a person who doesn't have the antigen then the person who receives the blood thinks that this is a foreign substance and then mounts an antibody against it to destroy the rbc the person who is negative for a blood group will identify that the positive blood group is something foreign 
and then try to destroy it. How does he destroy it? His WBCs produce what is called antibodies. Antibodies are produced in response to antigens. Very good. So now let's get back further and understand the ABO blood group system. Uh, the ABO blood group system has got antigens and antibodies. What is the antigen? The antigen is the basic molecule that is the H antigen. Those who have uh, the persons who have O blood group will have only the H antigen. The person who has the A blood group will express both the H antigen and the A antigen. Persons who have B blood group will express both H antigen and B antigen. And people who have the AB blood group will have H antigen, A antigen and AB and, uh, and B antigen on this surface. Some people do not have H antigens also. If the H antigen is not present, if the first molecule is not present, obviously the other enzymes cannot act and convert it to A or B blood group. So such people will neither have the H antigen, nor the A antigen, nor the B antigen. This is a very rare group of people and this group is called the Bombay blood group. I'll have a separate video on the Bombay blood group. Now, antibodies of the ABO blood group system is usually of the IgM class. They are not present at birth. They gradually develop over a lifetime within the first uh, 8 to 10 months and that is because of the carbohydrates that we eat in our diet. Now, this is something which we have to understand. If a person has a particular antibody, antigen, then he will not form antibodies against that antigen. This is a self antigen. His immune system understands that this is self and hence will not produce antibodies against the same antigen. If a person has A antigen, he will not produce antibodies against the A antigen. Now, let us work up this table and understand the various ABO blood groups the various antigens present in the RBCs and the various antibodies present in the serum of the person. Now if a person has O blood group, I said he would be expressing only the H antigen. Why? Because both the enzymes are not present. So the H antigen is not acted upon to convert to A or B antigen. So a O blood group will have only H antigens. A blood group will have the H antigen and the A antigen. B blood group will have the H antigen and the B antigen. ABO blood group will express the H antigen, A antigen and the B antigen. The Bombay blood group is a very special group as I said which does not have the H antigen and hence neither H nor A nor B is expressed in there. Now what will be the antibodies present in these people? In the previous slide, I had said that the body, if it expresses an antigen, will not produce an antibody against it because these are self antigens. So let's work on it. A person with O blood group has H antigen. He does not have the A or the B antigen. So his serum will contain anti-A and anti-B antibodies. A person who has a blood group A has the A antigen and the H antigen. So the body will produce antibody only against B. So there will be an anti-B in his serum. The B blood group similarly will have anti-A. ABO blood group expresses antigen A, B and H. Since all the three antigens are being expressed, no antibodies will be produced. Whereas a Bombay blood group doesn't even have the H antigen. So for this person, an H antigen is foreign, an A antigen is foreign, and a B antigen is foreign. So he'll have anti-A, anti-B, and anti-H. Now, how is the Bombay blood group different from the O blood group? Please look carefully. In the O blood group, we have the antigen H, which is not present here. In the O blood group, we have only anti-A and anti-B, 
whereas in the Bombay blood group we have anti A, anti B, and anti H. That is how it is different. The next blood group system that we need to know is the RH blood group system. The ABO blood group system was proteinaceous in uh, was carbohydrate in nature. The RH blood group is proteins in nature. It consists of a three groups of related proteins called C, D, and E, of which D is the most important and antigenic. A person, if he expresses D, is called positive, and if he doesn't express the D, he is called negative. Now, the antibodies of the RH system, unlike the carbohydrate system, do not develop naturally. They can only develop when an RH negative person receives RH positive blood. That is the time when the person sees the RH positive antigen, identifies it as foreign and produces antibodies. Otherwise, if a person is RH negative throughout his life, he may not have an RH antibody. In the ABO blood group system, by 9 months of life, the antibodies against the various antigens have already developed. This does not happen in the RH antibodies. And other condition <coughs> where a RH negative mother, uh, another condition where RH antibodies are formed is when an RH negative mother has a RH positive child. This usually occurs at the time of delivery. Unlike the ABO system, the antibodies of the RH system is IgG in nature. This IgG antibodies can cross the placenta and affect the new developing child. So this becomes very important when we're talking about pregnancies. The ABO blood group system is made up of IgM. IgM are large molecules and they cannot cross the placenta. So mismatch of ABO blood group system does not affect the child, but mismatch in the RH system definitely affects the child. Now, <coughs> there is an other condition which I want you to be aware of and that's called the DU blood group. Now, uh, this is just hypothetical that if there is an RBC which is having a normal RH positive RBC should be expressing about 100 RH antigens. This 100 is just a number to understand. Some people may express only about 5 or 6 or 10 of these antigens. That is, the expression of the RH antigen in certain group of people may be very weak. These people are called DU blood group. Now, what is the importance of this? You must have come across situations where some people say that some blood la some laboratories call me RH positive, some laboratories call me RH negative, and they uh, they say that the lab uh, testing is wrong. Actually, these people may be the DU blood group because of the weak antigen expression, it may not be picked up. There is an other problem with the DU system which we should understand, and that is the role when we uh, when they either donate blood or receive blood. Now we have to understand that the antigen expression is very weak. The immune system of the person who is DU positive may not recognize this as antigens. Right. So if a DU person gets an RH positive blood, then his immune system may think that the RH is foreign and mount an antibody. So what is the problem? The problem is that after the transfusion has occurred and the person has got sensitized and starts developing antibodies, these antibodies may act on his own RBCs and start destroying them. That is, the R antibodies produced act on his own RBCs and keep destroying it. So throughout his life, he will develop a autoimmune hemolytic anemia. That is, his own system identifies his own RBCs as foreign and starts destroying it. On the other hand, if these people donate blood, there are chances that the RH antigen could sensitize the recipient and make them develop antibodies against the RH system. So, when a DO, when a person is being detected RH negative, we need to do an extensive test before 
uh, and checking up for this du group before actually calling it rh negative secondly when a du person is donating blood he should always be labeled as rh positive when a du blood group receives blood they should always be considered as rh negative thank you very much for listening to my lectures please feel free to contact me whenever you want through the email if you have any feedbacks about my lectures i would be ready to receive them you could also request lectures and i would uh, happily make them for you thank you very much